Everyone, welcome to the show. I have a bunch of updates to share about investigations into Trump and his allies. So first, the New York Attorney General notified the court that the Trump family just started to turn over documents for the discovery process. This is for the $250 million tax fraud case. And they're refusing to answer any questions about how they're collecting this information or even when they think all of these items are going to be finally turned over. The court had set a deadline of April 30th, so they've obviously just blown right past that. And the prosecutor said there have been, quote, no documents produced by Ms. Trump. The AG says not only has Ivanka failed to provide any necessary documents, but she also appears to have a lot of missing emails. Ironic, isn't it? But her emails. (laughs) So according to the AG's court filing, Ivanka had provided them with an average of 1,218 emails a month for the year of 2014. That dropped down to an average of 242 emails in 2015. And then from 2016 on, Ivanka was showing an average of only 37 emails a month. I mean, really? Come on. And the AG told the judge, the Trumps have offered no explanation for this decline. I mean, it's obviously so suspicious, right? Trump launches his presidential campaign in 2015, and all of a sudden, Ivanka has no emails. All of a sudden, just nobody's emailing her. She's not emailing anyone. So we're going to see what happens with that. But the judge now has pushed the deadline back to May 12th. Also in New York, a judge dismissed Trump's lawsuit against the New York Times, and he ordered Trump to pay their legal fees. We weren't familiar with this case. Trump had claimed that the New York Times colluded with his niece, Mary, to illegally obtain tax documents and other documents for them. Well, the judge hasn't ruled about Mary yet. He hasn't ruled about her, his niece. Um, But like I said, he ruled against Trump in regard to the New York Times. In regard to the special counsel investigation of classified documents, a new round of subpoenas were recently issued to senior Trump employees to appear before the grand jury. And the New York Times is saying that the Justice Department now has a confidential cooperating witness. They say this person used to work for Mar or at Mar-a-Lago, and the DOJ is zeroing in on what Trump and his employees did and what they may have said. After they receive the subpoena for the classified documents, the DOJ is also said to be focusing on security camera footage and whether or not it may have been edited or maybe some things were left out because they've reportedly been questioning witnesses about, quote, gaps in the footage. So they've subpoenaed the company that handles all of the surveillance videos for Trump and all of his properties And evidently, investigators are asking witnesses about a text message that was sent from a Trump aide named Walt Nata. You guys may have heard me mention him before. Um, This text was sent to the Trump Organization Chief Operating Officer, Matthew Calamari Sr. I know this sounds like a made up spy novel. (laughs) Guido book, but it's not. These are real people. Anyway. Um, This text, apparently, and subsequent conversations allegedly involved this whole Mar-a-Lago surveillance footage matter. So we don't know exactly what, we don't know what's going on there, but people are being asked about it. And Nalta, by the way, is the one who supposedly, along with another Trump uh, employee, moved the boxes Apparently, according to witnesses, he and another employee had moved the boxes from that storage unit to another location. And they did this at the direction of Donald Trump. But now Nata has clammed up. Apparently, the DOJ put too much pressure on him, threatened that he was going to be charged. And so now his attorney just went dark. Anyway, on top of all of that, the DOJ has subpoenaed records related to Trump and his relationship with the Saudis. Uh, more specifically with in, in regard to this live golf tournament that they recently started. That's really eyebrow raising because it's been long reported by The Intercept that Trump and Kushner and the Saudis is a very underreported story 
about potential collusion, about potential bribery. I mean, we know the Saudis handed $2 billion to Kushner, right? And we still don't know really why. Apparently, he has no credibility in this in the area that, you know, this company he started, no, no background in it, no experience. They were advised not to give it to him by their advisors, and they did it anyway. You know, it makes you wonder, how many state secrets can you buy with $2 billion? I'm just saying. And you know the Justice Department has to be getting close to something because Trump is freaking out. He has been all over his failing social media site having just a total meltdown on Friday. He had a full-on Trumper tantrum about the DOJ, the FBI, and he wrote, quote, These people are thugs and criminals who allow Antifa and BLM to thrive and flourish, but who use full Gestapo force to shut down opposition and interfere in our elections, which is what this bullshit is all about. (laughs) And then you guys may have heard, he also forced his attorneys, it seems, to send this groveling letter to Congress, basically begging them to make it stop. to to just stop the DOJ investigation. This is like the easiest game of hot and cold. I don't know if people in other countries play this, but here in America, we play a game called hot and cold. And with Trump, all you have to do is issue a few subpoenas. You prod a little bit here and there. And then he lets you know if you're getting hotter or you're getting colder, (laughs) just based on how much he loses it. So (laughs) he's so easy. Anyway, guys, I will let you know when I hear more. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please donate if you possibly can. It helps to keep the show going. Love you all. Take care, and I'll talk with you soon.